I guess, first video you can watch. Uh, <laughs> story mode, Half-Life Explained. You know how this goes by now. You know the, how this goes by now. So, let's just go ahead and watch it. Brought to you by Gamers Ups. Half-Life, a.k.a. Well, you, girl, Middle Age. stop it. This puppy, I swear. So there we are. We are on a train. Oh, we are on a shh, train gotta watch the video. to work. Work at the science facility. I am Gordon Freeman, Morgan Freeman's grandson. No relation. <laughs> Gordon is a hazardous Wait, material grandson, research scientist no relation. guy. Got it. Right? And he works at a super top secret underground science facility called Black Mesa, which is in New Mexico. Now, Gordon is all about the science, but he is also all about the silence because he is a silent protagonist. You see, he is completely deaf. Mm, yeah. You see, there was an unfortunate Q-tipping accident. He Q puts the little stick in there. Q-tipping accident? I've actually had a fear of that happening to me one time. Because, like, have you ever done that where you actually did use a Q-tip and it just went a little too far where it like started to hurt and you start panicking i've done that when i was younger yeah yeah luna yeah he's a cute puppy you're a cute puppy yeah and when he pulled it out no cotton on the other end he tried the <laughs> other ear same thing oh my god the topic the important thing here is black mesa now, here at Black Mesa, we are developing portals and are in direct competition with Aperture Laboratories. You know, the guys who made the portal gun? It's like a space race, but with portals. All right, so we're hurrying to work on the tram, and a voiceover happens. Yeah, I know. Do you know how weirded out I was to find out that you're not actually supposed to use them that way? That's not what they were of officially made for, and I was like, my whole life is a lie. My whole life. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. Please keep your limbs inside the train at all times. Now, when I first got this game, I was far too young to be playing something so scary. So what I liked most about this game was not the inevitable head grabs and zombies that are coming up, but instead, this nice train ride. And then once scary things started happening, uh, uh, new game. Ah, nice train ride. So we're halfway through our commute, and there's a tram coming towards us. And you see in that other cart? That was the G-Man. He is an important figure throughout the franchise. But he's not important right now, so we continue on with our lovely train ride until finally lovely. Oh, we reach our stop. But then we slow the elevator down music because this guy Barney is so goddamn slow. Let me off the train. Let me off the train. Before exiting the train, <laughs> Come on, man. Can you walk twice as fast, please? <laughs> the guard comes up to us. I believe his name is Barney. And he says, Morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. So we hop off the tram and we run towards the entrance. We enter the big facility. There's screens everywhere. Look at those CRT televisions. Very advanced. We run past a <laughs> bunch of scientists. Hello. Hong, says Gordon very deftly. <laughs> On our way down Why? to the science room, no. we see, oh, there's the G-Man again. We just saw him like a long way away. Mm. How did he get there? And this other person is the administrator. So the G-Man gives the administrator a sample of a type of Zenian crystal. They're used in order to open portals. The administrator is very excited and he really wants this test to go well. So he then gives the instruction, use this crystal, run power at 105% instead of 90%, which is the nominal amount. And so we're going to be doing a very unsafe experiment. All right, we're still going to the lab. But first, we're going to take a quick detour. Let's go to the cafeteria. In the cafeteria, there are a couple of things. A piping hot thermos of gamer subs. It's Earl Grey flavor. <laughs> Yum. But also, there oh is a God. microwave. You run up to the microwave and you press the button, beep, beep, boop, and it overheats one of your co workers' soups. It belongs to a guy named Magnuson. This is like Gordon, you lousy motherfucker. You know what? Stop fucking fucking with the microwave. It is not vital to the plot, <laughs> but it is canon. So, oh, okay. You know what? We'll do Half Life 2 at some point, and that will come back up. <laughs> come on, Gordon. We got work to do. Okay. 
so we go into the changing rooms and in the changing rooms are a bunch of last names on all the lockers and those are the last names of a lot of the devs but we have to find our locker so where is freeman wait a minute wait a minute Cooper. <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> do not open that locker <laughs> no are you seriously watching porn by yourself no i'm with the science team <laughs> why do we all have to wear these ridiculous what the ties fuck? come on gordon you gotta get your environmental suit now this suit is important not just because it looks good but it gives you a health bar and it protects you from the elements so you go over to the suit and you unlock it and then you jump in but we're still running late for work so we gotta get down to the action lab where action science happens action neil degrasse tyson is waiting for us and we're mm. late mm. start the game where's the train where's the train so we jump in an elevator and we get down to the lower floors. Here you see a whole bunch of tubes and electricity is around the place. And all, all the scientists you walk by say, oh, Gordon, you're so late. But that suit is very stylish, but you're so... So we get into a room <laughs> with four Stop scientists. It. <laughs> ah, Gordon, here you are. Do you think we should split an atom? I think it's a good idea to split an atom. Oh, I, I want to reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. I, I want to add baking soda and vinegar together in one of those paper mache volcanoes. Oh my gosh, that's what killed the dinosaurs. They're waiting for you, Gordon, in the test chamber. The scientist the walks over chamber. to his viewmaster goggles. Ah, <laughs> uh, Rafiki, you <laughs> son of a bitch. I, I remember having one time. of those. Here is where they keep some of the already split atoms. Now they're really pushing this machine to the limit, right? Because they are running things at 105% capacity. Machines are breaking all over the place. Computers are exploding. Oh no, the data's going everywhere. So Gordon finally reaches the front door of the science room. And the two scientists there are like, Gordon, are you sure about this? Are you ready for this? This is going to be the most advanced science experiment we've ever done. And Gordon's just like staring at them in absolute silence. He's got no idea what he said. <laughs> Stop it. We'll be deviating a bit from standard analysis procedures today, Gordon. Mm -hmm. Yes, but with good reason. Mm -hmm. This is a rare opportunity for us. This is the purest sample we've seen yet. Yes. And potentially the most unstable. Mm -hmm. Now, now, if you follow standard insertion procedures, everything will be fine. The scientists are saying that, hey, we've got the purest crystal sample we've ever had. And you're going to need to put this in like a big energy beam right so it's gonna do i don't know something really cool maybe an explosion they're very excited at that idea <laughs> open the door fellas it's science time go ahead go ahead let's let him in now We are in the middle of a five-story chamber, and here you can see a big apparatus. That's where the beams come from. And Gordon's job is now to climb a ladder and get to a platform near the top where he can press a button. And then he has to push a cart into the beam, which is now turned on. <laughs> Now slightly touch the crystal into the be- No, Gordon. Wait, Gordon. <laughs> the gamer stops, I can't. The whole crystal. Gordon. No, Gordon. <laughs> but he couldn't hear them because of his deafness. Stop it. Stop it. Uh-oh. Green stuff. Gordon gets a massive dose of radiation. My science, Gordon! Is that a heckin' alien? <laughs> so, there's a big error and explosion. Everything goes black. Gordon is breathing heavily. And not just because he has asthma, but it's a very tense situation. <laughs> And a moment later, I can't with y'all. I can't. Everything seems to be falling down all around us. Without warning, Gordon is sent to an alien land. This place is called Zen. There are creatures everywhere. There's these things that don't quite look like plants and not quite like mushrooms. They're very large. Then everything cuts to black again. We're suddenly surrounded by these four alien things. Gordon doesn't know what they are, but we do. They are called Vortigaunts. Now, they don't look super hostile, but they don't look super pleased to see you either. Suddenly it goes black again. 
and we are transported to the headquarters of the Gamersops. <laughs> of course we are. Of, the of course. Is made. Welcome, Gordon. I'm Sandra, and this is my. Who could have seen this coming? The name's Heavy. Heavy Liability. Heavy Maybe Liability. This new experimental flavor. Resonance Raspberry. Someone really didn't want kids with that kind oh, no. of name. Oh no, it's getting in Gordon's <laughs> eyes. Things are happening everywhere. I'm going into a portal. Listen up, Sandra. It's time to get serious. Last time, we gave away free samples of Gamer Subs. You abused that trust. Some of you ordered several packets to the same address. Many of you <laughs> sent it to Zimbabwe and other places. And so they said no more free samples. But you can have... 20% off store wide for a limited time only. That's a great deal. But this only goes for 48 hours. After that, you only get 10% off, but then that's permanent. Uh oh, I dropped my diabetes medication into one of the packets. Someone's <laughs> gonna get a big surprise. Could it be uh, you, Chad? What? So if you go to gg slash story mode, you get 20% off. Definitely surprised. If you're slow, 10% off. Also, they send me kickbacks. And over. Okay, we're back in Black Mesa. Everything is even more destroyed than before. And now we gotta get out of here. We gotta run for our lives. We go over to the exit to escape, and we see on the ground a dead scientist. They spent so much time wondering if they could, they didn't stop to think whether they should. We run into the hallway and we see a bunch of scientists lying on the ground. Gordon, I think this one's gonna pull through as long as nothing crushes him. Oh no! <laughs> oh. But there's no time to mourn now. We have to get out of here. That's right, Mark. Welcome we don't back, know the Yobi. extent of the damage. The whole facility could collapse around us. We enter the next room, and we see these two scientists on the ground, and they're going, I should have never listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now we're gonna be living a half-life. <laughs> I can't with these two. I can't. I never thought I'd see a resonance cascade, let alone create one. Science man, they're talking gibberish. What's a resonance cascade? Well, Mark, this is kind of science 101. But basically, sometimes when you open a portal too well, it opens lots and lots of portals. It's called a portal storm. Another portal, another portal, and another portal. And that is what's happening right you now. You get a in portal, you get a portal. CERN. Is that really true? Mm hmm. Please get to the surface as soon as you can and let someone know we're stranded down here. So this scientist is going to lead us into the next room, and he quickly looks at the viewfinder. The bus is dead. No! <laughs> I know, I know. Resonance Cascade. Come on, Mark. We're wow. going to get through the laser room. Wow. What? What's the laser room? It's a guy with a laser pointer. Oh, yeah. Watch I forgot out. about the Discord ah. thing, Yumi. So we have to crouch down to dodge the laser, and then we crawl on into the next room. We keep going. There's explosions. There's head crabs. There's lasers happening all around him. It's very exciting. But wait, Mark, what's a head crab? Have you seen a coconut crab? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like that, except what they do is they jump on your head and they turn you into a zombie. They have these mandibles in their gross mouth and they latch onto the inside of you. Now, they actually don't kill you like a zombie. Mm -hmm. They keep you alive. And the person who is being controlled by the head crab feels everything. Yeah, when I first... Yeah, oh my God. When I first heard about this, I was horrified. Because it's also proven in the sound, like what you're, what you're about to hear right here. Like I'll back it up a little bit. But when I first heard it, oh my god, it creeped the fuck out of me. This would be torturous. All right. Uh... Head crab feels everything. <laughs> A fate worse than death. No, they like it. Mark, you're getting no, distracted. Pick up the crowbar don't. and let's get God. to the elevator. So we press the button and we're about to get out of here. Going down? Uh, no, we're going up actually. Oh, okay. So we climb up the elevator shaft and at the top we see a guard fighting a head crab. Zombie! Now this is usually where the game would get too scary for me and I would go... New game. Time to ride the train again, please. <laughs> so, so we're chatting with the security guard, and he goes, Man, I'm about to see you. What the hell are these things? And why are they wearing science team uniforms? I have something to tell you, Barney. <laughs> what is it? 
They are the science team. <laughs> this is what happens when you put too much baking soda in the volcano, Barney. All right, so we're fighting oh, no. our way through the hallways. Not the baking and soda in the volcano. And we're making it to the trolley. And then, once we've made it to the trolley, we'll be able to, you know, get back home mm -hmm. to my apartment, and then I can just kind of hide out in the bathroom until this all blows over. <laughs> and if anyone asks if I did it, I wasn't there. Oh, well, I didn't even show up to work today. I had terrible diarrhea, I swear. <laughs> no, no, we got to go. Which way's to the trolley? It always works. Um, turn left. Here. Tell Wait him you had terrible diarrhea. Oh, well, why we're here. Have you ever noticed that if you go over to Gordon Freeman's locker, there's a photograph of a baby in there, which means that at the very least, Gordon is a kid. Yeah, wow. Right? Or it's canon that he was once a baby. But, you know, Gordon's like, never forget what you're fighting for. <laughs> right, no. Mark, turn right. Oh, look, it's that office from before with the G-Man in it. But now there's a scientist there fighting a head crab. File this one under D for dead. <laughs> No, wait, Mark. I said go west. Oh, good navigating. We've run right into one of those vortigaunts with their electric fingers. So we take the second exit on the roundabout to the train platform. We have made it. <laughs> we gotta get back to my apartment. I've got a kid at home. I haven't fed them in several days. Wow. So we run over to the tram and we jump on and we leave and we go home happily ever after. Mark, Mark, that's not how it goes. <laughs> all right, fine. Well, when we actually get to the train platform, it's all destroyed. There's a scientist there, and he's standing on the broken platform. We wander over to the scientist. Maybe he knows a way out of here. No, stay back, Gordon! Right, don't forget, Gordon is deaf. And we're like jumping up and down on it. No. Gordon! <laughs> Now, when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, if there's a way to, like, somehow safely get down into this, like, abyss area, or somehow reach the tram, even though I'm not supposed to, they might be able to just let me get out of here. <laughs> I just didn't understand game logic, and I wanted to get away from all the scary things. Did your parents buy you this game when you were seven? Or yeah. Here you go, have fun. <laughs> 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 right, so we head back into the facility. We have to find an alternative route to escape. We run into a second cafeteria, and we find a new scientist. Hello, Gordon. New enemies, look at that, the barnacle things. Look, Gordon, uh, help, help me, Gordon! Stop! He climbs through vents, he finds a shotgun, there's a guard that follows and Gordon around for a little while, to... and he meets Suppy, the Gamer Sup's mascot, and they split a can of Zimbabwe zucchini flavor. Limited edition, you only have one minute to get it before. <laughs> oh, it's too late, fellas. <laughs> GameSup.gg slash Roy Mode. He ends up in a freezer at one point. How now, many times are they the going to put Look that in there? Look who it is. We spot the G Man again. Hmm, why is he so unaffected by the destruction around him? What does he know that he's not letting on? But there's no time for that, because suddenly this scientist does an action dive, which is wicked sick cool. The Zynga. It's old Sheldon. Wait, where's he going? He's making a beeline out of there. Well, I don't like his chances of escape. See, I've got some bad news that's really going to increase the stakes. First, the government sends in a bunch of soldiers to kill all the scientists. These soldiers are called HECU, Hazardous Environment Combat Unit. And then, once everybody has been killed, they will nuke the place. Alien Cooper, do you copy? Repeat, we are commencing airstrikes. You will start at Zork. But why? Why are they going to nuke the place? Cover it up, innit? Government doesn't want you to know that they're doing science down there. Science rules. Don't say that, Mr. Scientist Man. Can't you see what science hath wrought? Gordon fights a bunch of these marines, fights right the way through till he gets to another lovely train ride. And there you find Barney again, remember from the start of the game? He goes, Gordon, you must have heard. The government is going to nuke us. Ah, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Our fate is sealed. No, wait. If we can stop their GPS satellites, perhaps we can stop them from nuking us. They won't know where the base is. I think we can do that. We have a rocket at the base. If you can get it up into orbit, you can save us all. Go, Gordon, go. Jump on the tram and I'll let you through. So he heads over to the rocket launching <laughs> place. Background and he music. presses I love the it. on button. Light the fuse, Gordon. Let's see this baby fly. No. We succeed in taking down the GPS and stopping the nuclear strike. No. However, 
everyone now knows where you are because you just launched a big fuck off rocket, right? <laughs> so the enemy is swarming around you. You have to fight off a bunch of assassins. Hello, Gordon. You beat them no. <laughs> so you thought. You see, when you walk the into highlight. the next room, ambush. The highlight on One that booty. comes out of nowhere Hello, and knocks you unconscious. <laughs> So they're beating up Gordon and they're just smashing his dick in and he's crying, Ow! Stop! <laughs> and so they beat him unconscious and they drag him. Yes, this is totally what happened. Where are we taking this Freeman guy? Let's kill him now. Uh, and if they find the body. Body? What body? <laughs> you are then dragged away and it fades to black. Now, you can piece together from their radio orders that they were supposed to bring you to the surface for questioning. However, they're quite annoyed because you've killed so many of their men. So they just decide, you know what, let's put this guy down. And they go, we, we can't just do that, right? They're going to find the body. Yeah, but I've got a way to dispose of the body. We then lose consciousness. When you wake up, you are suddenly now in a trash compactor. Uh-oh. A la that scene from Star Wars. That is how they were going to get rid of your body. But we climb up the boxes and we get out of there. Anyway, Gordon reads a sign that says, To Freedom, which Gordon reads in Braille, because he is deaf. New building. We turn around to see a scientist. Hello, Gordon. His name is Eli. And he tells us a bunch of vague exposition. And we're going to put it together for you. So basically what's happening is this. The resonance cascade is happening, which means these portals are opening up all over the place. And they don't know how to close the portals either. Now, the scientists reason that the portals cannot be closed. And that's because where the portals lead is a place called Zen. It's an alien world. Something in that other world is keeping these portals open, which means we have to go there to shut it down. And by doing that, we will stop all the aliens coming through here and wrecking everything, breaking stuff. So we have to go into this big reactor that will teleport us to Zen, and there we can close the portals for good. So we go up to the reactor and press the on button and it's quite loud. Before we <laughs> jump through the portal, we have a bit of a chat with the scientists. The scientists just a little chat. around and they're just going, a little, Gordon, just a little goss. you know what you must do. The sunglasses, I can't. I can't. Let's go to Zed. How do I do it? You gotta jump into the middle of the reactor. Mm, I don't know. This doesn't sound like such a good heckin' idea. Sound, sounds a little sus. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they stopped that one from going bad. But, but that's not how, that, that's not how it happened. <laughs> As he's being pushed yeah. into the CERN. Trust the science, Gordon. Gordon enters the reactor glowy bit. Cut. To uh, now this my eyes. is super neato, right? We fade in and we are no longer on Earth. We have been transported across the galaxy to Zen itself. Gordon has survived the trip. Now he has to stop whatever is holding the portals open. I gotta save the world, says Gorgon. Now we fight all the wildlife here in Zen until we find another portal. This takes him to heaven. It's so beautiful. Oh, I was yes. waiting. Game of Sops. Uh, GG slash story I was mark. waiting for the next one. I knew they, uh, I knew they weren't going to stop. I knew it. I was waiting for the next one they were going to do. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't. Look at all the different flavors, Sandra. <laughs> oh, I'm falling everywhere. I'm knocking over all the shelves. No. Actually, he sent to some sort of alien facility. And at the alien facility, there are water gaunt everywhere. And they seem to be like the workers here, right? This is like their version of Black Mesa. Like, like legitimately, that's what this is. White Mesa. And so we climb our way up the facility until we get to... I'm half expecting a Vortigaunt version of Gordon Freeman. Yeah, the Vortigaunt is there with the microwave, pressing the button. <laughs> Stop fucking with the microwave! So Gordon climbs the <laughs> tower, and at the top he sees another portal. So he jumps in that, and he is sent to a new world. In this place, there's a sort of bizarre ziggurat thing. And he runs over to it because it's a portal. Wait, before we jump through the portal, why don't you tell us some lore? Okay, in-depth <laughs> lore time. Yay! Now, in Half-Life 1, the Vortigaunt are bad guys. They're constantly zapping you with their electricity. Ah! 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 
<laughs> In future games, they will actually be allies. They will help you. Yeah, they. <laughs> and the reason why that's the, the case blush. is because they are under a sort of mind control at the moment. So the Vortigaunt have a collective consciousness. You can think of it like a mind internet. But a big scary creature has come along and it is suppressing that shared consciousness, right? It's like a big Wi-Fi block. Now the thing that's oh, no. doing that is called a Don't show me that blue screen the of death. is also the thing that's keeping open all the portals, which means that all these creatures are coming back to Earth. So, in principle, if we destroy the Nihilanth, Vortigaunts go free, portals all stop, and they'll be your friend later, and they'll give you electricity, but this time it'll feel nice. Kind of like when you <laughs> swallow a 9-volt battery and you feel all full and tingly inside. What? Mm. So let's do it. Let's what? do the Wait boss a minute. With I the think we need to talk about so that. So <laughs> we fight the boss. <laughs> the boss baby, if you will. Abortion uh, complete. Uh, abortion at 500,000 years? That seems too late to me. <laughs> and we are sent back, back to somewhere new. And Gordon hopes to be sent back to the Gamersup's planet. Gamersup's oh, fucking GT slash story mode. Or at I least, swear. Uh, but instead. Is that the G-Man? What does he say? Gordon Freeman in the flesh. Or rather, in the hazard suit, I took the liberty of relieving <laughs> you of your weapons. Most of them were government property. As for the suit, I think you've earned it. Now at this point, it's very apparent that this guy doesn't just work for the government. He's something else altogether. The border world, Zen, is in our control for the time being, thanks to you. Quite a nasty piece of work you managed over there. I am impressed. The G-Man alludes that your efforts have helped in some sort of war. You don't know who the war involves. You don't know if it's people or other aliens or what's going on. God, that's hurt my eyes. why I'm here, Mr. Freeman. I have recommended your services to my employers, and they have authorized me to offer you a job. They agree with me that you have limitless potential. Which is very kind of them to say, because I didn't have to say that. You know, you just got to put your head down, work hard, and send your resume to as many dimensions as possible. We are <laughs> teleported one final time, and we are now on that tram where the game began, except we are not on the tracks anymore. You've proved yourself a decisive man, so I don't expect you'll have any trouble deciding what to do. If you're interested, just step into the portal and I will take that as a yes. Otherwise, well, I can <laughs> a battle you have no chance of winning. Rather an anticlimax after what you've just survived. So we are presented with a choice. Either work for the genie oh, no. into this portal, not knowing what your fate may be. Or, or be sent to an arena where you cannot win the fight and you die. But oh no, Gordon is deaf and he didn't hear any of that, so he just heads towards the shiny thing because he wants to grab a grabber. <laughs> Wisely done, Mr. Freeman. I will see you up ahead. It is a 10% raise. And also, on Fridays, they do a pizza lunch. In the Ooh. Hall, Freeman is then put into a sort of stasis. He exists outside of time and space. And he is put there until such time as he is needed again. Kind of like a Pokemon in a Pokeball. Ah. Yes. Which is Half-Life 2, I assume. Correct. The end. <laughs> but what does the G and G man stand for? It stands for Guppy, the gu no! mascot, and, and heavy liability as well. Stop Don't it! Gamer subs get twenty percent off. Hey, what a great deal! Or if you're really slow watching this video, ten percent off. That's an even better I can't deal. Yeah, with because no, ten is cheaper than gamer twenty. Subs ad, like, or ad, I can't. What is with them? What? Oh my god. I can't.
I can't with y'all. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.